I go look. Hi, hello. It is time once again for the Total Health Live. Wow, this thing is really kind of buggy. It's the time for the Total Health Live program, your weekly one o'clock Pacific program where we discuss all things related to health and how to not just survive, but thrive in these changing times. I am one of your hosts, Dr. Christopher Vogelman, and with me as ever is the nutritionist to the stars, the woman who knows about weight loss, the skinny jeans lifestyle gal herself, Monica Clark. Hi, everyone. Welcome. How was that? Did I do okay today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I adjusted my height because I was always sitting lower, and now I'm higher. So I'll, you know, I'll do a lower. There we go. Higher. There we go. Now, well, now you're too high, but you are I'm a little too high. taller than me. High as a cut. I like doing Elton John. Elton John. I'm going to get rid of this thing because it is just relatively useless. But I saw one of my my favorite uh, social media gurus, Mari Smith, who lives here in San Diego, using her little pop filter on top of it. But my pop filter is too big. So. Yeah, that's um, yeah. Well, you know, I just as I was mentioning before we went on air, um, uh, my husband was very involved in television production and video production, and I just found a couple of new mics in in one of his big um, extension cord, uh, whatever cases or whatever. So I'll be playing with that a little bit. But I have a really nice mic, and I uh, hope the audio is good for everybody. Uh, you know, before we start, I just want to say thank you so much for all the response and all the the wonderful attention you gave us uh, while we were while we were uh, worry, it's the wrong way. doing our. <laughs> it's better now. It's better okay. now. Okay. Can I can I speak now? <laughs> yeah, you may speak. I just had the wrong branding up, and we're for the for the two o'clock show. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to just ignore his interruption for a moment, and I just want to say thank you so much for participating in last week's launch of the new Lifestyle Mastery Series and subsequent offer of the New Normal New Normal Diet Elite Program. I just can't, couldn't believe the response, and I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart that, that uh, I just can't explain how wonderful it was to have you be a part of this and to participate. So thank you so much. And um, thank you for your comments and thank you for being a part of this community. I really, 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 again, can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So with that, we're going to, we're, and th please stay tuned for more things coming. There's more things in development and uh, we're going to be rolling it out as we, as, as we see fit and as the need um, uh, is is there, and I'm you know definitely happy with the clients that uh, that signed up, and I'm happy with all of you, not just the, the people that signed up, but I'm happy with all of you because you're priceless, priceless people, priceless individuals, and uh, just my mission, and I know Christopher's mission is to keep you healthy and strong for a long, long time. So with that, why don't we dig into COVID news? COVID news. Ladies and gentlemen, COVID news. <laughs> so there seems to be an increase. I, I heard a term, um, it was called, um, oh, um, case-demic, case-demic, meaning case that the cases were going up but the deaths were going down, which yeah. is a good thing. It's a very good thing. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. Yeah. Unless you're in the Midwest, in which case both are going up. Yeah, but not as dramatically no. as they have been. So that's good news too. And of course, there's vaccines. Um, they're they're looking at rolling out a, a vaccine A and B uh, early November. Interesting timing on that. Um, yeah. so the drug trials. Um, so the drug trials, of course, always entail you know, a control group and a placebo group. So if they, if they see that the placebo or if they see that the control group is getting better, they're going to uh, just, just stop the placebo and, and start giving the placebo group um, this, this uh, new vaccine because it's based on efficacy, of course. And so they don't want people to die because they're not getting that particular vaccine because if it's helping, it's helping. And we have to, we have to move forward with that. Which by and the way, has been a problem in the past with certain, <laughs> certain that? programs. 
Well, I, many years ago, I worked in pharmaceuticals as a pharmaceutical sales rep, but I can tell you, one of the things that came out during that time was the whole Vioxx controversy, where they put I can't oh, right. yeah. twenty that to forty thousand people in right? And yeah, and, and, so, and Vioxx was pulled off the market because when you went from like tens of thousands of people in a trial to suddenly millions of people, all of a sudden you had a lot of heart attacks and strokes and things like that, which they never saw in the smaller test group. So I personally, from the view inside the pharmaceutical industry, as well as a health, being a healthcare professional, I'm a little suspicious of uh, project warp speed. So. Well, yeah, and that's the that the, that's a concern. And we talked about the Russian uh, Russians with their vaccine race to the vaccine kind of thing, race to the moon, race to the vaccine. I, I think, mean, I think that their vaccine is just basically vodka in a syringe. <laughs> yeah, so. Kills everything. Kills exactly. Everything. It's good. It's good for celebration. It's good for if you got a cold. It's good if yeah. you're celebrating. If, so. if you're freezing in the sub uh, sub zero weather, you know it will warm you up for sure, and it yeah. doesn't freeze. So it that's is the, it is the illusion of warmth, and it probably is also the illusion of health. So yes, yes. So vodka, vodka for you. Vodka. So um, and that another interesting thing I just found, you know, in my research, who I I really like, I really like uh, um, getting a lot of my information from John, Dr. John Campbell, who I've mentioned several times. He's a uh, retired nursing professor in the UK, and he is a vast. He's vast. Um, he has a, a vast amount of knowledge on this and he's very credible, very extremely credible, um, very extremely credible, credible. He's so credible. <laughs> he's so credible that he's got very in front of him. Very and um, and and incredibly incredible. So um, he talked about the um, if there is a chance of reinfection, that the inoculum, which are the viral particles, will be substantially reduced. Uh, in in as so making it less potent and of course the symptoms less severe and I also heard something recently uh, through a, a couple of sources um, that uh, many of the people I know this is, sounds very morbid but many of the people who would have died have already. Um, passed away uh, as being the, the most vulnerable at this point. But of course, there are many more vulnerable people that have not been exposed that for some reason or another, they're not in an environment where they would be exposed or they just have some other reserves that, that uh, so they're much more protected for some reason. So have you heard that? Have you heard that? Uh, I, I, that's something that has escaped me, but I can tell you for a, for a fact that uh, my concern nowadays is less about the death rate, although 185,000 plus and rising is still a, a, lot. Great, a great concern. Oh. And um, but I am concerned about people pushing herd immunity, which means you know one to two million deaths in the United States alone, and that just seems like uh, you know the we give up strategy. Just let the thing wash over the entire population. Um, in that case, then you're going to have a lot more people who are in vulnerable categories uh, ceasing to breathe on this planet. The last, the other thing that it hits me is that I'm more concerned now, despite the fact that the death there's still a lot of deaths about the long-term consequences of organ damage or inflammation oh, and those types of, of things. Course, exactly. Because because it's it's one thing to cease your physical existence. It's another to go through life with maybe 50 or 25% lung capacity. Or, and, and that's yeah. and that's the situation with chronic disease. Yeah. You know, it keeps masking, you keep masking and band-aiding and, and you know just to keep people going, but they're not well for sure. So in Spain, um, the president of Spain, I um, forget her name, but but she, she's having all the school children are now returning back to school. Yep. And I guess the, the, the thinking there, of course, is herd, herd, um, herd immunity. Um, I, think, I think many countries are kind of leaning that way. Uh, I would say even the U.S. in some ways, because ki you know, kids are going back to school as well here. Um, it's, it's not as um, far reaching as Spain because all school children are going back. Whereas here, I think there's some sort of option you have. 
It depends, it depends on where you are because right here in San Diego County, I can tell you it's all virtual. There is no hybrid yeah. because they made the decision that hybrid was simply not workable under the current situation. Even though we have a, a, a relatively low death rate and infection rate, there are places that pop up periodically. And the concern is that children can be carriers Absolutely. And, and the teachers unions are up in arms and I don't blame them in some ways because kids could carry it to teachers who then carry it to their own children and parents and others. And so it's a very delicate situation. I mean, quite frankly, you only need somewhere between six to eight weeks of everyone wearing a mask and it will go away. But nobody wants to comply with public health initiatives because I think we do, I mentioned this before, I think in the United States, we have this conflict between rugged individualism and uh, collaboration and cooperation. Well, it's, 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 um, it's, a, it's against what, um, you know, it's, it's not the best, the best uh, philosophy in this situation. I mean, this is a health crisis. It's been a health crisis and uh, rugged individualism doesn't fight uh, um, a pandemic or a deadly virus. So and I think I think when you look at it, I like to think of you know the population, well, not just the United States, of the entire world, as particles of humanity. So if you take all of humanity together and view each person as a cell in a greater body of of humanity, what happens to one cell does affect all the other cells yeah. in that body. We, we are definitely all connected. It's, oh, yeah. it, we're definitely all connected. Um, you know, in Thailand, they have they have had zero cases for 100 days. Same and thing, New Zealand. I have a buddy in New Zealand who told me, he says, he says, we were chatting two nights ago. And he said, he said, you know, we were we had zero cases for 100 days straight yeah. in New yeah. Zealand. So. Well, okay, so they still have, Thailand still has those 100 days, and they started wearing masks in February. So mm -hmm. we, of course, here in this country did not comply. Um, I also, there's a physician, Monica Gandhi. That's a great name. Or Monica she's, Gandhi, is she on a hunger strike right now or no? No, but she's okay. in San Francisco General Hospital, and she talks about mask wearing. Yeah. By wearing masks, you're less likely to get very sick. Yeah. Then, then um, you might get sick, but not very sick. So yeah. there are degrees. There are degrees to all of this, of course. And you can ask your, and you can ask yourself the question: How sick do I want to be? Very sick yeah. or mildly yeah. sick? Yeah. I um. Uh, as I was sharing with you before we came on air, uh, we had a, a planned power outage here at the at the house. So we used our brand new generator for the first time, and that is. I'm glad I had people helping me because that's like. Scary did stuff. You pull that thing to get it started like a lawnmower? No, you flip flip a, sw a switch. And oh, that's a nice one. I, I'm used to the ones where you have to pull the switch. Yeah, forward. no, no, this is brand new. So you just flip a switch, but you have to, you have to, it's all strategic. You have to have to put the, the more, um, the larger appliances, you plug those in first. And then the second, you know, the they're, it's sort of like tiered. How do you, how do you do it? And, and of course, all the materials connected to this uh, this product uh, talked about flammability, uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. It'll blow up. It's going to, you know, you have to ground everything. I mean, I did not want to get near it. Well, some people, some people make the tragic mistake of using a generator, uh, a gasoline or diesel power generator indoors. And that is that. But that's a classic every season. You know, when there are power outages all across the U.S., there's somebody who starts their generator indoors. Don't ask me why. Yeah, I know a lot of it's legal um, protections yeah. uh, in in those in those materials. We, m m my husband's nurse, started it up the night before, and it was very close to. Uh, it was in the patio and was very close to the window, and so fumes were coming in, and and so we decided actually to put it in the garage because we have a very you large keep the garage patio. open. I hope you keep the garage. Yeah, it was slightly open and okay. uh, one of the neighbors uh, came on a bicycle and was sort of like, Oh, what's going on here? I hope you, I hope you have, you know, uh, it aerated enough. So, so you start, don't inhale all these fumes. And um, it was quite, um, quite something. <laughs> I think it caused more, more anxiety than anything. And, um, but you know, I think it's a good thing to have, especially if you have equipment. 
Yeah. Uh, if you have someone at home that requires specific medical equipment, uh, durable medical equipment, uh, it's it's definitely essential. And my husband's hospital bed should be running on nine volt batteries, and of course it wasn't. So um, so we're getting that checked into. But um, check it out. It's uh, it's I think it's a good thing, but you have to be extremely careful and have people around that know what they're doing. Um, yeah. You know, and and. Um, yeah, so we had a little bit of a generator party here yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Don't I mean, know. not a real party because I no have donuts. a lot of forcing parties because it's a just... weekend, right? And we don't want parties. This was two nurses plus my husband and myself and a generator. Two nurses, a patient, and a, and a nutritionist like walk, a into, walk into a house. <laughs> sound like a movie title? Yeah, yeah. No, it sounds like it sounds like one of those bar jokes, like, you know, a priest or oh, a rabbi. It could be, yeah. But I was thinking of uh, four weddings and a funeral. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> Nobody die in... Nobody in die. Although, I do need to share... Big Chewy's with us today. Oh, Big Everyone Chewy. remember our mascot, Big Chewy? Um, oh, Big Chewy. Where's, where's Big Little Chewy? Lot. I, I cannot I cannot cook Big Chewy because he's like a pack. Is Big Chewy gonna rot if you don't cook him? Well, they last a long time actually, but <laughs> put I don't him in your root cellar. But we did buy him a friend, and they made it, and we all of a sudden created. They created. <laughs> These are. I don't know. I don't know. Little Chewy. This is 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 this? He has a weight issue, I think. Yeah, little little Chewy is uh, not little as little. Little Chewy is more than Big Chewy. Maybe well, this little Chewy. Good. Little Chewy has some BMI uh, issues this there. Is so good for um, uh, butternut squash is so good for the gut. It heals the the gut lining, and I just really think it's a, such a great uh, vegetable that you want to include it as long as well as some other root vegetables. I mean, we're coming into the fall season, which it doesn't feel like fall. I think it's going to be 105 here today. Yeah. I think but, September is going to be a lot hotter than either July or August. Yeah. It's at uh, least here. I mean, anyway. Um, so, but you know, the, the, the nights are cooler, the nights are cooler. So we're starting to think, and, and the last week was nice and beautiful and it was, you know, just beautiful. Um, so we're going to have these ups and downs in temperatures and the heat heat waves will come until probably mm -hmm. mid November, I'm sure. Um, but we start thinking about root vegetables, you know, beets, beets are great in the summer too. You know, a, a beet and feta cheese salad. It can't, can't be beet. Feta cheese. I love feta cheese. It's a great protein source. I put it in my vegetables all the time. It just gives it so much like a, like a bite and a tang. Um, my, my salads have this, a bite and a tang in them. Look at these, check out these radishes. Ravishing. They are amazing. They're big. Are you sure you they weren't in a, a Chernobyl or like something? The they size look of a little, um, well, gra crab apples. Do you know about crab apples? I understand a lot of people don't know what crab apples are. We used to grow them. So. Oh yeah. So um, some areas do not have crab apples. They're just little apples and they tend to be tart, they're like very tart, but sometimes tart and sweet and they're delicious. I grew up eating those. Neighbors had them and they'd fall off from the tree and we'd, um, we'd either get them or take them <laughs> from the tree because there were so many, so many. So as kids, you know, we would eat these and munch on them. Did you, did you operate a crab apple gang in, a, in a crab Canada? Apple Kid gang, yeah. Kid gang. yeah. But they were so sweet and yet they had this like tartness and they're so delicious. Well, these, I mean, they're almost the size of crab apples, but mm. these are good for the blood. Radishes are good for the blood. I just think these are amazingly Is that wonderful. Because they're red? Um, I'm not sure exactly. I'm what just kidding. Is. They're yeah. white on the inside, red or on the outside. Any kind of radish is good because there are yellow radishes as well. There are different kinds of radish, colored radish, radishes. So this is the time to start, you know, having the harvest of, of your gardens at this point. And um, in fact, we've been getting a lot of uh, vegetables from um, another AIDS garden we've been getting tomatoes we've been getting figs oh the figs were delicious I love a good fresh fig figs and uh we also got some peaches this is store-bought 
but he also had some peaches and apricots earlier. Those are a little bit earlier. Um, I think they're more July apricots in, in our area here. Can't go wrong with garlic. Good for the immune system. Yeah? No, I'm just thinking, no, it is good for the immune system. I'm just thinking when I eat too much garlic, it does disturb me, so. Oh, yeah. Well, sometimes it's the sulfur in garlic and, and onions that causes some digestive issues, oh. but um, um, still delicious, still good. So you have to modify. Sometimes if you have a, you know, a reaction to it, you want to have less of it or have it not as frequently. We have had supplements in the past, too, that the supplements that had uh, what the odorless garlic where you could take a gel tab or something like that. Yeah, I have some have too. Yeah. And I take that on a daily basis. I was trying to find some garlic um, capsules or garlic tablets for my cat mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I used to give my other cat um, another cat those, but I can't find them anywhere. And I think I mentioned this uh, previous previous live about, you know, if anyone knows where I can get some garlic uh, pet capsules or pet tablets, tablets, because they don't eat, gar they don't eat capsules. And okay. then this, uh, so yummy, so rich, add it to your, add it to your food. And this, uh, this is a, um, a mission, a mission, mission fig cross. This is not a fig. Oh, wait, That's sorry. I had to check something else. Mission. That would be a avocado. huge fig. Wow. It's a big fig. Big fig. It's big fig. Um, no, this is a Haas avocado. Haas. It's not yeah. Karl Haas from the classic. And it's business. not quite ready yet, but it's almost ready. We, I like it just soft enough. Yeah, we, we've had some interesting things because here in Coronado, on Coronado Island outside of downtown San Diego. We actually, whoop, there goes somebody on a motorcycle. We've actually had uh, neighbors, very friendly, mm -hmm. friendly neighbors with avocado trees. Mm -hmm. And we have, and in yeah, fact, uh, I, I wound up picking up some avocados from an alleyway not too long ago. And we well, used to- This is the same, this is the crab apple scenario <laughs> that I was cherry. Same like idea, crab. you know? There's a plethora of, of abundance. We've, of we've got lots, of, we have lots of lemon trees and avocado trees here. So, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, and it's funny because people will actually put little baskets near the tree and with a little sign that says, take one. So, yeah. I mean, I think it's great because they're just going to go to waste. Yeah. I, I had um, someone go shopping for me and I at Sprouts yesterday, and I thought she was going to get a small little container of blueberries, but the flyer was actually big and she bought two of them. I said, please take this home, have your family enjoy it. But it was a huge, I think it was maybe a two three, pounder. three, yeah, two pounders. I think, I think it was. So, so, so what about, so we talked about something because before we went on, you were talking about how about diets and the question is whether diets are a good idea. Um, but then again, you know, the whole new normal diet elite program and everything was based really upon the, the idea of achieving a more normalized weight in order to have a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, and so diets, diets, okay, so when we think of diets, we think of something restrictive. We don't right. think of an eating, a healthy eating plan and uh, a strategy. When you have a healthy eating plan, you will naturally lose weight. That's yeah. the beauty of eating well. Um, I wanted to mention that third year in a row, um, that they do this, um, you know, the best diets of, of the year kind of thing. So third year in a row this year, the Mediterranean diet has been named the best diet overall in the U.S. News and World Report annual rankings. In 2018, the Mediterranean diet shared top honors with DASH, which is a dietary approaches to stop hypertension diet, both and both of these focus on fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Ta-da! And the Mediterranean way. I mean, not the, the American way, no, Mediterranean way. The Mediterranean well, has been around as, as, as touted as a wonderful diet for a long, long, long time. Yeah. I'm surprised that it's, it's never really been knocked down from its number one or number two position very often. And, you know, this is, I mean, Mediterranean, when you think of Mediterranean, there's olives, vegetables, feta, mm -hmm. feta often they use olive oil and i was lucky i don't know if you've if have you visit you've been in the mediterranean you've been to italy. oh my gosh yeah i've been south of france throughout italy uh, places like that. did you ever go to turkey no 
but uh, I have friends who've been there and uh, I had a lot of Russian friends in the DC area who have been there. Uh, it was a very popular, the, the beaches south of um, Istanbul are very popular with Russians. And in fact, one time, one time, I will give you this as an aside, one time I was in line to come back to the United States uh, in a long, long line at the airport, Shermetrovo, uh, and uh, it turned out that I was in the line for Istanbul by mistake. So maybe it's, it is my destiny to eventually visit Turkey. <laughs> You know, that reminds me of one of my favorite shows called Velvet. It's a Spanish series that I've told you about. And there's like a part where he's on his way to, um, where is he going to? Argentina, but he decides to go to Istanbul instead. Oh, Lark. <laughs> well, no, because that's like, that was sort of karmic. He, he had to go. That was like where he needed to go. And the whole storyline revolves much of much of the second half of the, the the series revolves around that issue. Anyway, I have been to Istanbul, and um, so a lot of these Mediterranean foods, like Greece, I mean, you know, in Vancouver, where I used to live and where my family lives, there are Greek restaurants almost on every corner. It's like Starbucks, <laughs> um, but there's a really really um, um, uh, vast uh, Greek community there and Greek restaurants are so great. So I love, I love Mediterranean food and it's so essential. I mean, it's essentially fresh fruits and vegetables and, you know, nuts and seeds and olives and olive oil and, you know, cheeses. And, and don't forget the lamb. Yeah, they do eat a lot of lamb. Um, and yeah. fish, lots of seafood. Yeah. So Yeah, lots of seafood and fit. Um, uh, but Lyle, also India, India, I mean, of course, there's a lot of vegetarians in India, but they do eat lamb. Uh, they certainly don't eat beef, of course. We know that, especially, well, the Hindu uh, population doesn't. So, um, but yeah, so they they have the souvlakis and their versions uh, in each country. And so cer certainly Iranians and the former Yugoslavia. When I went over there, it was still Yugoslavia. So there were lots of um, similar foods. Although, you know, it depends where you are in Yugoslavia. But if you're on the Aegean, you know, the Mediterranean, Aegean, Adriatic, um, oceans, and uh, yeah, so. So Mediterranean diet, Mediterranean diet is a good thing. So what about the question that you raised earlier, which was, it's not what you're eating, but you know, you want to figure out, you know, like what's eating you? Yeah. And I think this is pretty relevant right now because uh, everything's eating us right now because we're under so much stress right now and so much mm -hmm. uncertainty. And I mean, I think mm -hmm. we've, we've, you know, looked at this issue through probably every every uh, live we've done in the last four or five months is really, you know, um, if you're upset, you go to the cupboard, do you go to the fridge? If you're upset, if something's not working, what do you do? Do you use food to um, stuff those feelings, the anger, the hurt, the, the um, annoyances? What do you do? I mean, you, you just lost how many, 15 pounds, 13 pounds? I think it was like 15 or something. It was seven, seven kilos plus. It's going, it's, the funny thing is, you know, you get to these areas where you're stabilized and then like for a week or two, nothing. And then suddenly things change. Yeah, so I think if people, people get discouraged when you read a, reach a certain set point. But I know from working with hundreds and hundreds of dieters in the DC area that, you know, sometimes things just stop and your body is readjusting and coming up with new set points and ready to go into the next batch of fat burning activities. So, yeah. So those plateaus are very, very common, yeah. but I want to ask you specifically, Christopher, before you sort of cleaned uh, up your see. diet a little bit, yeah. did you, did you rely on food to stuff down your feelings? Did you, you didn't do that. So you don't have that Not pattern. Really. Yeah. I don't. I don't have that. I don't have that pattern. And in fact, you know, it's interesting. I even I, I go through periods of cutting out alcohol completely, like I've done for the last seven or eight weeks or so. And yeah. I think part of it is just because I'd like to see who's in control here. Is the body and its cravings in control, or am I in control? And I will tell you that based on many. Uh, even crisis moments in my life, the times when I was able to fully feel everything that my little cerebellum and amygdala and, you know, were, were feeling um, were far better than trying to numb something out. Mm 
And I think it's it's a mindset which says embrace emotional pain so you can figure a way to take that energy and transform it into something more useful. I think, I think uh, yes, absolutely right. And I think in all my experience of working with women, I think women tend to do that more than men. Yeah. Uh, I certainly worked with men, but mostly women. And women do tend to stuff their feelings because they tend to be a little more emotional and they um, that, you know, that's often the way to deal with, with that. Um, but you said but also that on, the, on the other hand, women are far more in touch with their emotions. Men, men yeah. often are just sort of numbed out like on a daily basis. <laughs> Yeah, but they use other strategies. Yeah. I mean, they do use food for sure. And maybe it's not just uh, based on stuffing their emotions. Maybe it's just overeating or, or you know, whatever it is. Boredom, it could be boredom. Yeah, boredom is right. People, a lot of people just eat out of boredom. And I, I think that's, you know, especially when they have snack foods like, you know, popcorn and chips and things, and they just sort of mindlessly go dipping until there's like two bags are gone and during a two hour movie. And it's like, well, what happened? And it's that yeah. unconscious, unconscious eating. Yeah. yeah, the unconscious part is what really gets people. Like, so, so for me, it has really been a situation in which I, I think it's basically in my mind was taking back control of what I'm eating and what I'm doing. And, and of course, you know, being married to a, a lovely Mexican food blogger, there have been a lot of tamales and tortillas and all kinds of things. And I think I just got into the habit over the course of several years, you know, because it's taken about, I would say it's taken a good five years to, to put on that 15 or 20 or whatever it is. But it's been really fast to get rid of it. And I've been I've been astounded at yeah, how well, easy men, it has been. Men do burn fat, fat so much faster because of your muscle mass. Yeah, so, it's, it's it's part of it, but I think you know it, it's it's one of those things where, I mean, I've seen I've seen so many women, female clients who've done similar things, maybe not as rapidly. Maybe they lost, you know, one and a half kilos a week instead of two kilos a week. Yeah, um, I, you know. Yeah, I see it all the time and the women come in and they tell me, you know, my husband's doing this with me and he's lost so much weight. It's really frustrating for me. I mean, I, I hear that all the time. So, yeah. but, but, that's, but that's just normal. That's, that's biology and biochemistry. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But you, you brought up a good point about, you know, feeling your feelings. And we are in a culture that wants us not to feel un, unhappy feelings. Uh, we're supposed to be happy. We're supposed to be, you know, um, always in this pleasure pursuit of pleasure. We're supposed to be always happy and and delighted, and and we're not supposed to have these kind of negative as negative uh, feelings, which are really not a good thing because they are part of who we are, and life is not easy. And, and they seek to they seek to protect us until they become not very useful. Yeah. And depression is something that we try to squash down. And depression is a very natural, natural emotion. And life is not about like having your way all the time because it's never like that. And so you will have moments of depression. You will have times of depression, depending on your circumstances, depending on, you know, all sorts of things. But, you know, circumstances, I mean, sometimes, I mean, there's clinical depression and then there's life depression. I, I think I, I don't even call it depression. I think most of us experience sadness and sometimes extreme sadness. But there is sadness and there is depression and it's also often lumped together. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're not supposed to even say we're depressed because that uh that's sort of shunned uh even you know well, they, and, and they, are I do. Different, they are two different emotions depression and sadness are you sad <laughs> no i just i just believe that they are this that, that sadness is labeled as depression all too often and and it is because um I guess, you know, for, through my clinical experience, having worked with some psych patients and others, as well as, you know, selling pharmaceuticals to alleviate clinical depression and others, um, the distinctions, you know, maybe, you know, the distinctions are a little finer yeah. than that, in my yeah. opinion. So. I mean, even if you look at Chinese medicine and the group of emotions that are connected to the organ systems, I mean, if you look just at the lungs, the major uh, emotion connected to the lung meridian is grief. Yeah. That's, right. 
And then there's all these other subsidiary types, uh, types, mm -hmm. emotions connected to that as well. Liver is usually anger. Gallbladder is usually um, frustration. I think it's no resentment. Gallbladder is usually resentment. So it's yep. interesting to see um, and, and to actually, you know, kind of look at it this way as, you know, these are part of who we are. They're not to be suppressed. They're part well, of the, the in, yeah, and I do think that the interesting thing about this, the, the negative emotions or the ones that we label as negative is you actually can take that, the strength, that energy within the emotion and turn it into a more positive expression, primarily through physical action. Well, and, and that yeah. that has that has become sort of one of my go tos if I'm getting angry, and in fact one of my office managers for many years ago, she used to whenever her kids would fight and they get angry she made them vacuum. She said she had the cleanest uh, carpets in all of upstate New York. I mean, it's a way to kind of um, subvert that channeling, and, channeling. Yeah, channel them into more healthy and productive ways. But even you know, let's go back to grief. Um, you know, to honor that, to actually honor the grief that you're feeling and not to, and to acknowledge it and to say, this is a teacher here. These emotions are teaching me something and to like take, spend time with them. You know, they don't have to run your life, but to take time with them. Like what, why am I feeling this grief? Why am I feeling this anger? I mean, what is it in my life that I need to address or, or just accept you know, so it's um, it, it can take um, a, a whole new shift in thinking about negative versus positive. I mean, they're all valuable. They're all valuable. And the what question is very interesting because what can I do to make things better? What can I do? What can I do to express these things in a way that doesn't hurt myself or other people? So there, there are a lot of what questions. In fact, it's funny because my next broadcast at the top of the hour is going to be the power of questions. So <laughs> here we go, power of questions. And we have more questions. Yes, yeah, like what new foods, which, what new foods would you add to your diet if you could, besides big chewy and the radishes? And the um, many, many. And we can cover a lot of those next week too, because okay, we, yes, we could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just think about it. I'm gonna we can leave you with that question. Yeah. What new foods would you like to bring into your diet? What you um, gonna add? What new thing, like maybe just pick one or two things that you would like to add to your diet this week. What is it? You know, is it is it um some beets? I know a lot of people that have never had beets. So try it. And, I, you and know, my you hearing, my hearing is tuned to. I thought you said beef. So. Beets. Beets. <laughs> and yes, of course, there are people that don't eat people beef. Have never, had beef. never had beef. But yeah, green beans. Um, you know, just don't eat, green, don't eat green beef. Don't eat green beef. That's that's green beef is no, no. <laughs> green, green beef will cause you grief. <laughs> what new things would you like to add to your diet this week? What I had this week, I just think more of the same, really. I mean, I would, I would like probably, more, add, I would yeah. probably add more, more ginger and turmeric tea. I would probably add uh, maybe more cruciferous vegetables. I mean, we do tons of broccoli here right now, but I might mm -hmm. add cauliflower. I might add some uh, Brussels sprouts, for example. I have had, like, for lunch, I had sauerkraut, which it was another one of those healing, gut healing, uh, microbiome enhancing. Yeah, I mean, when you have when you have a fermented vegetable, there's all kinds of wonderful probiotics that are in there, and I do feel better after I eat it. I mean, days later, it's like, wow, this is really good. You know, I just had a consultation with an Ayurvedic practitioner in Australia, actually, and um, she said I should not have any fermented food, which which I'm happy to hear that because I do not do well with fermented food, and also we're we're like looking at the imbalance that I have right now in my system. So, so there's that too. So, will I eventually want fermented food? I have never liked sauerkraut. I grew up with it and I never liked I it. Did, I did not grow up with it and learn to love it later in life. Just like yeah. I, as a kid, I hated olives. Now I can't get enough olives. So That's another food that I've learned to like. And, um, and I'm not supposed to have that right now because it's also a little bit too um, not good for my constitution, as they say in Ayurveda. How many amendments are there to your constitution? <laughs> 
as many as I need. <laughs> as many as you need. Okay. Well, speaking of needs, if you need to hear more information on health and adapting to the current Climate. multiple changes in our in our environment, stop on by next week at the same time. It's one, we're gonna say one, even though I start at 105, just so I can get used to coming in here. At one Pacific, four Eastern, three Central. 2 Mountain and 10 a.m. Hawaiian Standard. 10 a.m. Hawaiian. And I, and I know a couple of you are watching us from Hawaii because you've told me so in private messages. So. Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo. Okay, we'll see you next week. All right, see you next week. Bye. Have a good day.